The longest day of the year is already gone and we are in August and that means only a little bit more time before the nights start getting cooler and our animals start breeding. Now there's lots and lots of things you can do to increase those numbers as far as having twins and having triplets but maybe you don't want to reinvent the wheel, maybe you don't want to give hormones, maybe you don't even feed grain. What options are available for you? Well you may be surprised we're going to go into the past, talk about some things that we've known about for a very very long time that show real promise when it comes to having more twins and triplets on your farm. Stay tuned to find out more. Everybody, it's Tim from Lanessa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining me again today. So today we're talking about flushing. Now, sometimes when you hear the word flush, you think of the toilet, but that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about flushing as in to bring about or to bring out. And so when we talk about flushing with ewes and does, what we're talking about is manipulating them in order to make them ovulate with more eggs and therefore increase their likelihood of having more twins and triplets. Now, before I get ahead of myself, I want you to know that this is a very well-documented phenomenon. You can read about this on many university websites. If you go into the description below, you're gonna see an article that I've included from the University of Michigan. You can also go on Lanessa Farms Tack Box and see articles about this as well. So what is this all about? What is this nutritional flushing all about? When these ewes and does are getting ready to breed, how much nutrition they're taking in has a very strong correlation with how many eggs they drop during ovulation. Mother Nature knows that if nutrition is not very good, and if there's not much food around, then perhaps that you or doe should not drop too many eggs and be carrying twins or triplets, because if things are going awry, if you have a drought or if you have a lack of food, the chances of her being able to appropriately raise that baby uh, to birth and then be able to feed and take care of that baby diminish. So what mother nature does is she says, hey, if there's plenty of food and this ewer dough is very healthy, then I'm going to allow them to have more babies. And if things aren't going so well, I'm gonna restrict how many babies they can have. Well, we found a way to manipulate this system through feeding on our own. And it simply comes down to this. As we get approximately two weeks away from breeding, we can slightly increase the feed intake of our ewes and our does. And then three weeks past breeding, we can keep that uh, feed rate increase, and it is going to help them to ovulate harder, to drop more eggs, increase their chances of having twins and triplets, and it's going to help them to carry those embryos to where they get seeded very well, and they are going to get carried all the way to term. If you're new to Lanessa Farms, Thanks for joining us. Once a week, we offer a live stream. It's every Wednesday evening at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. This gives you an opportunity to ask questions and they are answered live. If you have not yet followed us on Facebook, make sure you do and make sure you check out Lanessa Farms Tack Box. Lanessa Farms Tack Box is a place where you can go. It's a private group. You're not gonna get bombarded with spam or unhelpful or unfriendly people. We can answer your questions and if we can't get you the answers, we can definitely get in touch with someone who can. With that being said, Let's get back to the video. When we talk about increasing feed, we want to talk about maybe one half all the way up to one and a half pounds per head per day for this five week period. Again, we want to do two weeks prior to breeding, three weeks after breeding. Now there is a little trick involved here. And the trick, I guess the caveat is this, if that animal is overweight going into this process, it's not going to work. If they're extremely underweight going into this process, it's not going to work. And if you're in the height of breeding season, they're already breeding. It's too late it's not going to work you need to do this two weeks prior to so the best way that we found to do this is to actually take those females have them completely separated from their male counterparts for a number of weeks up to a number of months prior to breeding we flush these ewes and does out two weeks prior and then we introduce the male in there with them even if you're going to be using hormones like cedars and pg 600 the flushing system can still work for you now i understand that some of you don't feed grain don't worry i have great news for you and the good news is this you can set aside a field of grass that has very very nice grass an area that's going to be able to hold them over for four to five weeks keep that area ready keep it pristine and growing and right before you get ready to breed them that two weeks prior i want you to put them out on that pasture 
that will work as a flushing mechanism as well. So don't worry if you don't feed grain, it's not the end of the world. You can still do what you need to do. Now, with that being said, and we've talked about this before, if you don't feed grain, there is no reason why you still cannot give your animals the vitamins, nutrients, medication, and electrolytes that they need through free choice mineral. If you don't have a good supplier for free choice mineral, feel free to contact us or to check out our website at www.foundationfeed.com. We have all kinds of solutions for you if you don't have grain or if you choose not to feed grain. We even have pelletized alfalfa meal if you choose not to feed grain and you just want to give them a boost of protein, we have 14 to 15% protein alfalfa meal pellets that you can feed and still stay all natural. There's a lot of considerations for you to make when it comes to supplementing their nutrition in order to have more babies. Check out some articles online, do your own research regarding this with various universities, and I think you'll be surprised at what you find. This is very well documented. It's even in the Merck Veterinary Manual. There are a few caveats that we haven't mentioned yet and one of them is this this stuff right here is clover if your animals aren't used to clover certain types of clover specifically white clover have been known to have some kind of effects on estrogen levels in sheep and goats there isn't a lot of articles out there that support this but there is some anecdotal evidence that shows that a field really rich and heavy in legumes such as clover alfalfa bird's foot trefoil all of these things can actually hamper this process from working appropriately because of the increased estrogen that it may cause in these ewes and does. Keep that in mind. If you set aside a field to run your animals into, to flush them, I want you to try to make this field as much grass as possible. At least make it to where it's not all alfalfa or not all clover or not all bird's foot trefoil. We're gonna have a lot of other videos coming up soon talking about breeding and cost-effective ways to boost those numbers. I'm Tim from Lenasa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining me again today and I look forward to seeing you again next time.